So in today's video, we're going to be talking about conservation of energy and pendulums. And specifically, we're talking about the conservation of mechanical energy for a pendulum. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can subscribe. You can uh, click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Please leave me a comment for this video and also share. Thank you very much for your support. Now, I've also made some previous videos for explanations of pendulums and calculations for pendulums. You can link to those in the upper right-hand corner up here of this video. But this is pendulums and conservation of energy. And let's just go over a quick definition, a quick explanation of what conservation of energy is. It is simply that the energy of an isolated system, in this case the pendulum, remains constant. It is conserved. And when we talk about conservation of energy, this is the most common definition I think you'll hear or see in school or in your textbooks. It is that the energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed or converted from one form to another. And in this video, we're going to talk about the conservation of mechanical energy. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the conservation of kinetic and potential energy and total mechanical energy. So this is conservation of mechanical energy. We're going to be talking specifically about potential energy, and we're going to be talking about kinetic energy. Please don't forget that potential energy, we're talking about gravitational potential energy, is stored energy because of an object's position, due to its position. And when we talk about position, we usually mean by its height or its height above some original reference surface. Okay, obviously the potential energy is uh, related to the object's mass, the acceleration due to gravity, but the most important thing is its height. In this video, when you swing a pendulum, you're not really changing the mass, you're not really changing gravity, but you are changing height. So we're gonna focus on the height of the object. For kinetic energy, kinetic energy is simply the energy of an object due to its motion. Okay, that's usually how you hear kinetic energy described, energy of motion. All right, and the kinetic energy is related to the object's mass and its velocity squared. Okay, now, once again, we have a pendulum. We're not really going to be changing the mass, but the velocity or the speed of the object will change as the pendulum swings back and forth, conserving the energy between potential and kinetic and converting the energy from potential into kinetic and kinetic into potential. Now we also want to just remember that we also have what we call total mechanical energy, and that's simply the total and the mechanical energy. So all we got to do for the total mechanical energy, which we often abbreviate TME, is just add the potential and the kinetic energy together. And this is where we come up with this idea for conservation with the pendulum is that the total mechanical energy of the pendulum, of this isolated system, does not change. If we add up the potential energy and the kinetic energy of the pendulum at any point in its swing will always get the same total amount of energy. That means that the total mechanical energy is conserved. Now for this video, we're going to be using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Simulations, Interactive Simulations. They're out of Colorado. They have excellent simulations for math and sciences. Go check okay, so out. this is the simulation from PHET Interactive Simulation that we're going to be using for this part of the video. We have our pendulum. It's just a mass hanging on a very light string like that. And the pendulum here is sing, sitting at the bottom here. We call that the equilibrium position. And when the pendulum has, is at its equilibrium position, that's important to remember that the height is zero. We don't measure the height of the pendulum above the ground or above the bottom of my computer screen, this is the lowest the pendulum can get, and therefore the height with respect to the pendulum is zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to pull the pendulum back as we do. I'm going to do some work on the pendulum, giving it some energy, and I think I'll pull it back to about 50 degrees like that, and then I'm going to release the pendulum, and it swings back and forth like that. And I'm going to turn on the velocity vector, and you can see how the velocity of the pendulum changes as it swings back and forth. And then I am going to turn on the energy graph and this will help us to see the conservation of energy because as you can see, the total mechanical energy, E total, is not changing. But as the pendulum swings back and forth, the 
potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. And the nice thing about this simulation is I can click on the slow button, and of course it magically slows everything down. And you can see as the pendulum swings up, the velocity decreases and the height increases, and it swings back, the velocity increases and the height decreases, and then the height increases and the velocity decreases. And if I can just stop it right there at the point where it's at its maximum height, then it's going to have its maximum potential energy because it has its maximum height. Well, also when it reaches maximum height, you can see it has no velocity. When the pendulum swings out to its greatest angle, to its greatest height, it stops momentarily, and therefore it has no velocity, and therefore it has no kinetic energy. So at the maximum displacement of the pendulum, it has maximum potential energy, which we calculate as mgh. It has no velocity, and therefore it has no kinetic energy. Now I'm going to release it and it's going to come back down and as it comes back down like that, you'll see the velocity is increasing. Well, that means that the kinetic energy is increasing. Well, where is that kinetic energy coming from? That kinetic energy is coming from the potential energy, which is being converted into kinetic energy as it loses height and gains velocity. And I can step this all the way down to the very bottom. And when it's at the very bottom at the equilibrium position, then it will have its maximum velocity because it has no height. And all of the energy of the pendulum is kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy comes from the conversion of potential energy into kinetic energy as the pendulum loses height and gains velocity. And if I let it swing back up to the maximum on the other side, as it moves up, you can see the velocity is decreasing that means the kinetic energy is decreasing. Well, where is that kinetic energy going to? That kinetic energy is going to potential energy as the pendulum gains height. It's losing velocity, losing kinetic energy, but it's gaining height and gaining potential energy. And once again, when it swings to its very maximum, then you will know that it stops, no velocity, no kinetic energy, and all potential energy. So at its maximum displacement, at its maximum height, it has the maximum potential energy and no kinetic energy, but when it swings back down to the bottom, it loses height, gains velocity, and will have its maximum kinetic energy at the bottom, and swings back and forth. And you can see that very nicely over here as the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy, and then the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, and the total mechanical energy stays the same. Okay, finally, I just put together this quick diagram to show, to summarize what we saw in the simulation. You should notice that at the maximum displacement for the pendulum on either the left or the right side, it's at its maximum height, so it's at its maximum potential energy, which we calculate as mgh and has no velocity and therefore it has no kinetic energy. But as it swings back down to the equilibrium position, it's losing height, gaining velocity, and the potential energy is decreasing and the kinetic energy is increasing and there at the bottom of the pendulum at its equilibrium position that we say that it has its minimum potential energy of zero joules and it's the maximum kinetic energy, which we calculate as one half mv squared. Now, this leads to some uh, calculations that we can do for the pendulum because what we know is that the potential energy at the top is going to be equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. So we could set those two equal to each other because we calculate the potential energy as mgh and the kinetic energy as one half mv squared. And we can use this conservation of energy to calculate which we most commonly do is the velocity of the pendulum when it comes back down through the equilibrium position, which we'll do a problem like that in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up for this video, please. You should leave me a comment, please. I always want to know what you think. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.